Welcome everyone, this is Hackcast uh, 009, the ninth episode, this is the first for 2019. Yep. Yeah, uh, it was a busy January, a lot of things going on in Hacksoft, but in the beginning of February we found time to re record this uh, episode. We have a new logo, thing. yeah, it's like the old logo but it's now uh, <laughs> bolted to the wall so we can yeah. have a proper studio-like uh, setting for, for hardcasts and what else? It's us again and you're going to talk about yeah. pull requests, why we do them, how code we do reviews. them, code reviews, yeah, yeah. code reviews with uh, uh, how we do them, why we do them and some good practices that uh, we, we follow and some good ideas that we yeah. want to bring. Yeah. Yeah, the, gen the general idea is that we want to discuss how we do code reviews in Hacksaw because this is like uh, a very important part of our uh, daily job uh, of the software development process. And the interesting thing is that in the different teams we do code reviews kind of differently. Yeah. We have different approaches and that's why I want to discuss them, ask questions and hopefully this will be valuable to some of you that's uh, currently wondering how to structure their pull request process or just want to hear a different opinion uh, because this is working for us so far. And perhaps let's begin with some context yeah. uh, about the teams that we currently have. So, so we are uh, technical team leads in two different teams. Yeah. So our main job is to ensure that our clients do not get crappy code to production. And yeah. we are the people yeah. that are responsible for uh, the, the, the things going well. So in our daily jobs, mm -hmm. we are doing a lot of pull requests, but we are uh, team leads of uh, two different teams. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we work, we, we both work here in Hacksaw, but we are leading different teams for on different projects. Yeah. So both teams are like uh, the size of uh, five to seven people. Yeah. So they're like big teams. They're not small teams of two, two to three people. And this means called reviews uh, can, how to say, they can get, uh, they can get in the way of delivering software. And that's why we, we have to be uh, smart uh, about the way we, we're doing cold reviews. Uh, both teams are working with Django as backend and Python as uh, different backend services that are communicating with the Django and React as frontend. Yeah. It's a single page application. So we have uh, one backend, big backend project and one big frontend project. Both yeah. teams have this. Uh, both teams. We kind of do the uh, more than just the software development. We participate in the product discussions with our clients. We give a lot of opinions. We, we take a lot of responsibility and a lot of lead uh, when working with our clients. So this is happening in both teams and this is also resulting in the code review process. And both, pro uh, both projects that we're working on are in the prop tech, the so-called prop tech slash real estate sector. So they have a common domain. And before we start talking about how we uh, approach code reviews in the teams, the first question is why are code reviews important? Okay, so so for me the code reviews are important because I as a tech lead, mm -hmm. uh, as a tech team lead, mm -hmm. want to ensure that there is no crappy code, no bugs, no 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 things that are mm -hmm. going to to lose some data or to bring some problem in problems into the real production environment. So this is basically the way of protecting the code base of someone mm -hmm. being not in a good condition, someone not in being not in a uh, good uh, mind process of yeah. shipping something crappy to production. We are all human. It's, it, it, it's always happening that you uh, are not in a good condition and you wrote something that is not going to work as, as you expected. All right. So one of your points is like catching errors earlier mm -hmm. uh, in the code review process because sometimes it happens. Yeah. Sometimes you need a fresh set of eyes to see that something is going to introduce a really strange regression that mm -hmm. needs to be to be fixed. And the other thing, of course, for me is that we need to keep the code base in in a consistent uh, way. Yeah. So so all of the code m must look at uh, the same way, and we yeah. And if if something brings something that is not consistent and looks differently, yeah. then you need to have a serious reason to do that. So yeah. So this is another. Uh, Mm -hmm. benefit of uh, having a good code yeah, review yeah. just to keep the code quality as high as possible yeah yeah uh, one other thing is that our projects are quite big and quite complex they have a lot of domain 
uh, domain specific things that you need to know. You can just be a good programmer and hop on the project and start yeah. working on it. You have to get the domain knowledge. And doing code reviews from the very beginning, from like two, two years and more, um, this helps to distribute this context and this knowledge throughout the team. It's really helpful because um, when you uh, when everyone needs to do cold reviews at some point, uh, this will distribute technical knowledge. Yeah. As you said, if things are looking the same, people will start um, how to say spotting different um, odd and strange things in pull requests. That's why are they not looking as the other parts of the code? And this will also distribute the knowledge mm -hmm. of the project. And this is really really important to keep the team team in shape. Yeah. First of all, second of all, to keep everyone happy and motivated because it's it, it really sucks to work uh, somewhere where you where you don't have the context. Yeah. You want to write a piece of code, but it, if you don't know the context or in the domain, you, you just can't write this piece of code because you, you need some previous knowledge. And for me, code reviews help this, help distribute and even the, the knowledge inside the team. And when you have a team with people that everyone uh, kind of knows the same thing, you can move really fast and, the, you, and you can keep the quality really high. Yeah. And this, is, this is really, really important. And perhaps the other thing is it's becoming part of the ritual of um, developing software. Mm -hmm. you, you start a feature, uh, you code it, you test it, and then it needs to be reviewed. And if you know that in the process of reviewing, your code is going to be improved yeah. in a way that you probably cannot improve it yourself because you have a, a fresh set of eyes and a different opinion, or uh, there is going to be, or someone is going to spot a regression that it's really, really, um, how to say, hidden. This this is great. It, it, it adds another step to the software development process. And it makes it really a, a, a team game because otherwise, even if you're pairing with someone. At the end, you merge your pull request, it gets deployed, and people start using it. But when you know that other people are going to see your pull request, you, you, you're you going to put the, next, the extra effort to make your code more readable, more accessible. Perhaps this will help you write better code. Yeah. So, yeah, it's quite important part of the ritual. Yeah. So code, re code reviews are really important. Uh, if people are merging without, without code reviews, I think, Things can go really bad really quick mm -hmm. uh, because people will start, everyone will start writing uh, the way they want to write, and so we'll start introducing bugs, and we will get a crappy software as we usually do. Yeah. You know, this is like the default. The default for software development is bad code <laughs> <laughs> that's not properly working. So yeah. it, it takes the extra effort to to have a better better software. All right, so how we do code reviews in our different teams. Uh, your team is working for um, the company's called Unisu. Yep. Am I pronouncing this right? I hope so. Unisu. <laughs> Unisu, yeah. yeah. They launched recently yep. in January. So tell me, how do you approach code reviews there? Okay, the so, team. okay so first of all, everyone is uh, making code reviews and everyone is getting code review before something gets right. deployed to uh, even to staging. Right. So so no matter if you are the most uh, advanced person in the team yeah. or you are an intern that is uh, yeah. making his or her uh, first pull request, you are getting a code review for All sure. Right. All right. So I have a checklist on my desk when I'm uh, uh, w when I'm making a, a code <coughs> review, and the first thing is that in our projects we have a pretty consistent structure. All right. We have a style guide. We have uh, you know good practices that we already know that they are good, and we have tested them in many projects. All right. So. All of our code at the back end, especially, mm -hmm. looks almost the same. All right, yeah. So if you follow the, the good practices, if you follow the style guide, if you follow mm -hmm. the style convention, then the code should look exactly the same right. as, 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 as the other code. So, for example, if you're bringing a new API, this new code, this new API, mm -hmm. looks exactly the same as something that as, 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 as another API. Yeah, yeah. So 
this is uh, the, the first thing that rings me up when I see a code that looks differently. Mm-hmm. I'm okay, maybe this code isn't right. Maybe mm-hmm. it's doing something strange that should not be here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or if there is a good enough reason that this code looks differently, mm-hmm. we should put some description yeah, on it. Some comments, or, yeah. Yeah, or, or bring a, a, a change to the style guide mm-hmm. to say, okay, this is acceptable, you might do this. And uh, we, we, we may realize this is a better idea and mm-hmm. apply it to uh, every, for example, API or, mm-hmm. or piece of code that you're doing. So, so this is the first thing that rings about. If something looks differently than the than the other code base, then it uh, uh, needs my attention. All right. It needs uh, me to, to get a coffee and iterate a couple time a couple times over it, basically to ensure that this different thing is okay to be there, or we need to change it in order to look like the other things. How many cups of coffee do you have? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, depends, but it, it just rings a bell and say, okay, bring your attention here yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. just don't, don't just grow it down and uh, uh, skip it. Right. So at the beginning, I was a little more... Um, Hands-on? Or how to say I was uh, putting too much attention on, on, on styles oh, right, and yeah. uh, things that are not really important to the code base like you should put a new line here because it visually uh, mm-hmm. separates these two blocks of code it, it, it's not the biggest or, or you should do this by uh, um, let's say dict comprehension not in this uh, old way of mm-hmm. uh, creating a, 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 a for loop or something like that so yeah. this is not as important mm-hmm. as uh, following the, the best practices and the style guide that we already mm-hmm. have in place uh, so maybe uh, a good suggestion is to, to, to look at the uh, bigger picture, not concentrating on the smaller part of the codes where right. you can, um, of course you can create some, some small, small improvements there, but this is not going to change your game a lot. All right, that's important. Yeah, so I basically have a, a task list on, on my desk. Every time I start uh, making a, a code review, I'm just going with mm. everything, check, check, check. Uh, I'm always starting with the tests. All right. Uh, of course, I'm always starting with the uh, pull request description right, in order yeah, to, yeah, to, to yeah. Uh, bring some context and to uh, say, okay, now I know what is this pull, re- pull mm-hmm. request about. Mm-hmm. If there is no description, I'm just closing it and uh, pinging the person that created the PR for description and, f- and to bring some more context. Right. Especially if this is a new feature, this is something uh, big, mm-hmm. it's a good idea to have screenshots, it's a good idea to have uh, describing the flow mm-hmm. uh, so, so I can properly test it and I can see, okay, it works, it, it looks good, or I can say, I have no context for that. I, yeah. I have no idea yeah. what is yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So, so better bring me. Or, or we are looking, we are working in one of the same office, mm-hmm. and I can always say, hey, just come to my desk so we can create the uh, code review together. Yeah. Uh, so you can explain to me why is this and what is this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if we are in more work from home environment, then mm-hmm. we are putting a good descriptions on the pull request, yeah. and investing this time of describing your pull request in a good way. Mm-hmm. Or if you're working here at the office, uh, you can just come to uh, someone's desk and uh, describe yeah. what you have done for the past couple of days. Another point in the uh, mm-hmm. checklist is uh, about, uh, so about style, not not, not really important to me. Mm-hmm. About right. following the, the best practices, this is kind of important. Mm-hmm. And that is when you start uh, writing comments on, on almost each line to yeah, yeah, say yeah. opinion. So. It is uh, really important, especially for the junior developers. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are, they they love the code that they wrote. Mm-hmm. So so they have some um, how to say attachment. Yeah, attachment to it. And and when you say to someone, hey, this code is bad, need to be replaced, need to be removed, mm. they 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 almost every time get sad. Yeah, they get it first. I think it's yeah. not just the junior developers; it's every developer out there. It, it kind of feels uh, offended. Yeah. When someone says, um, for example, this pull request is crap, or this is uh, this looks really bad, or change the style, mm-hmm. and you know there is a uh, how to say it's a nuanced thing because if someone's uh, like behaving really really bad and it's just an asshole in the pull request, then people can get offended. But sometimes you say, all right, just rewrite this in a better way, and then yeah. people get offended because they think you're criticizing them mm-hmm. and not their code. Yeah. And this is an important distinction to make at the very beginning, that mm-hmm. code is code and you are you're you. Yeah, yeah. So the thing that I do a lot is just asking questions mm-hmm. and giving uh, examples of, of a better way to, to write. Mm-hmm. So for example, not rewrite this, but mm-hmm. do you think this can be put in another yeah. way? Or do you think this code should live here, but, but not in the service? Mm-hmm. And I'm always willing to start a discussion on that, right. not just saying move that over there. Mm. Or uh, you know, I, I, I'm always willing to start a discussion in order to bring some arguments and right. 
to bring a better point of view of mm. uh, what needs to be changed. Uh, sometimes I'm just reacting with emojis on code that uh, looks really strange and you know everyone just can uh, yeah. check it and, and say okay I, I already spot the, the issue yeah, here yeah. so yeah when, when something is not in the right place I just play some random yeah, emojis to, yeah. to enforce that this thing should not be here or this thing should be <laughs> should be really so yeah I'm using a, a lot the uh, panda emoji yeah. just, just placing some pandas in in the code whatever something needs to be uh, removed changed or uh, completely rewritten. So the panda emoji means, please, come on. <laughs> Check this again. No, okay. don't, don't commit uh, your uh, breakpoints. Yeah, yeah. Or debuggers. Oh, yeah, <laughs> or con console logs. Or, or console like logs, yeah. yeah. So it, it, it's always that, for example, a PR is just a proof of concept. Mm. So all of, so it, it, it is okay to, to leave the debugger, so okay to leave the mm. uh, console log, it's okay to, to leave the, con in the, the call base in, yeah, this, yeah. in some crappy situation. But, uh, that is why I'm placing mm. some emojis without the need of describing what exactly need to be changed here because yeah. it's pretty obvious. Yeah. What about you? So, in, in the, we're working with uh, the collective. Yeah. yeah. They're doing like the this new co-living stuff mm -hmm. right now in the UK, but soon we'll open it in the States and I think in Germany. And we're writing the software for their back office. It's quite a complex system. Uh, it involves a lot of processes. It involves a lot of third-party integrations. So, and for us, uh, the pull requests are some the rev the cold reviews sometimes are like more important than the process of writing the the feature itself. Not always, but sometimes you need to be. Uh, really, really uh, careful what you're writing and what you're reviewing because we're in production every day and uh, we, we have to be stable. So one of the things that we uh, that we did uh, a few months ago uh, is we created a set of rules. We have a team rules, something like a framework that defines how you should what what is expected from you if you're part of this team and you have to comply to this framework into those rules there are not strict rules but but rather uh, a good to have um, behavior like when you start working on something open a pull request the for me it's like the, the in the first minute okay you create a branch you create a dummy commit you can just add a print somewhere or yeah a comma somewhere, something that will show a change, even an empty commit, although it's better to have a change, yeah. and to open a pull request. And then when you open a pull request, the thing that we did again a few months ago, because we really not, we really need to know the context uh, of the project and we, we really need to distribute this knowledge. Mm -hmm. So we created a pull request template. You know, okay. this is like a pretty fine set of things that you need to fill when you're uh, writing the pull request description. And you have things like you should uh, link your Jira ticket. You know, we're trying to, we moved from Jira to Jira. After all, Jira is not that bad that with, with the redesigns. Um, you should have a Jira ticket working. Uh, your pull request should be linked to a Jira yeah. ticket and your Jira ticket should have some context. Mm -hmm. What well, if you're just starting something and the context is not yet there, it, it needs time for the product owners to write it. You just copy a Slack thread Okay. That you discuss the thing with, with the product owner and you paste the link to the Slack thread in the Jira ticket and yeah. then you just say, this is the Jira ticket of my pull request and this is like a good enough initial um, thing for your pull request. Okay. You know? And after this, wh while you develop your feature, you, you continue to fill the other blank spots, blank spaces okay. in the pull request template. So uh, this really, really helps us because it gives context, as you say, when you open a, a pull request and you want to do a call review, you want to first get the context, yeah. read the Slack thread, read the Jira ticket, read if there's we're using Confluence for, for Wiki, uh -huh. read a few Confluence pages, check the spreadsheet, so so you get you get the context. And the other thing, for example, if this is if this pull request is for front is uh, on the front end project, mm -hmm. we either attach screenshots okay. or we attach a GIF. Oh, that's cool. Or yeah, we were discussing using uh, also video, but yeah. for now gives do just fine. Uh, so you have, so you can get the visual context without the need to, for example, s 
check out this branch on your front end and perhaps you need some data in the database to get to this state. So quick visual context is also very important. We try to reduce the time. Uh, we try to make it like not a requirement to set up the project for this branch mm -hmm. and test everything, you know, uh, because this wastes a lot of time. Uh, usually when the pull requests are more complex and we want to move uh, quicker without sacrificing, you know, quality or, or things like that. So pull request templates and the other thing that we do is we use labels in the cup. So we have like uh, four major labels, they are work in progress, which means I just opened this pull request or I'm working on this feature this mm -hmm. week. You, know, you can check it, but um, nothing there is final and perhaps it's going to look in a different way when it's ready to, to be okay. reviewed. We have a, a label called pull request for review, which means this pull request is ready. Mm -hmm. this, the description should be full. There should be a Jira ticket that, you know, it, it should be like ready for someone to grab it for review. Okay. We have a refactoring, meaning this pull request introduces just refactoring. Okay. And we have something that's called proof of concept, meaning let's, let's discuss. I, I've done something. Let's discuss it to see um, if you're going to spot any problems or uh, do you think this is going to be really helpful. Mm -hmm. And like this is the base. And the other thing that we try to do is to separate refactoring PRs from new feature PRs. Yeah. This this was like introduced a lot of uh, benefits right away mm -hmm. because you usually do, you, you, you constantly refactor something. This is part of a software development yeah. process. You constantly improve the code, add more tests, change the way something works. And when you do this, uh, combined with a new feature, it's really hard to read the pull request because there is a bunch of changes to the refactoring yeah. and there is a bunch of changes to the new feature and it gets really hard. And you can tell those pull requests when you look at the additions and deletions and you know when you have plus 300 additions minus 250 yeah. deletions, then this for me, this is a bad pull request. Sometimes you cannot escape that. Yeah. And you have to crunch it and review it and check it and uh, do manual testing by yourself as a reviewer. But if you can avoid this, you should avoid this. It's like this pull request is just for refactoring. It introduces nothing new. Mm -hmm. And if the tests are passing, then you should be fine. Yeah. You should merge it and then create a new pull request uh, from this refactoring pull request that introduces the new feature, but it's just the new feature. And then, you know, this is a good pull request for a new feature when it has like plus 300 additions mm -hmm. and either minus one or zero deletions. Yeah. This is a good feature pull request. And this is what we're aiming for in the team to have uh, because, you know, all right, this is just additions and then I can focus on the new feature and not think about is, is this breaking anything existing right now uh, because there are a lot of changes in, in an existing code. Uh, so yeah, you mentioned you don't kind of spend that much time on style. Yeah. So for us, we kind of do. Uh, sometimes we even get in this bike shedding uh, scenario where mm -hmm. people are discussing it's not that important if you're, if you're going to do it with a, a dict comprehension or a for loop yeah. and an empty dictionary and construct the object yeah. in the for loop. But, but you know, I like this because people want to, to keep the quality of the project high. And the thing that we try to do is to isolate those discussions with either style guides and rules. Mm -hmm. Like, as you said, everywhere in the project where you can make a dict comprehension, you make a dict comprehension yeah. so you don't have you don't have an argument not to do it here. Mm -hmm. You don't need a for loop. So just use use the comprehension. This is we use the same rule. Uh, there is an established way of doing things in the project, yeah. and new features and new things should follow this established way. People should not write how they the code the way they feel it when there is an already established pattern. And of course. If, if this established pattern is not good enough, then you can get creative, then yeah. you can extend it, then you can change it. Or if you have to introduce an entirely new pattern, then of course you can get creative and you can introduce this, this new established pattern, but things should look the same, yeah. both in front end, both in back end. Yeah. As the example, you're exposing a new API. 
I think we have like five, f uh, five remaining generic API views in our project, mm -hmm. which are going to be like changed with, with time. But so we don't use generics. You, we use API view. And if I open a pull request and I see a generic API view, this is just not going to pass because we don't need it. Yeah. We don't use it and you have to comply to the way things are done in the project. And this helps a lot to have wherever you open the code base, you, you're, you're expecting the same thing. Yeah. It's really important. So we try to do this, we try to have linters and we introduce, for example, for the backend MyPy, which mm -hmm. is a type checker mm -hmm. and we move to TypeScript. We're still moving to TypeScript to be fully, to have types everywhere uh, for the React, but this kind of uh, helps you alleviate the bike shedding discussions. You know, and also we're using Python and there's this, this thing called the Zen of Python, which also tells you how to write uh, uh, more specifically in a Python that complies with some mm -hmm. common style guides. I think if we were using Ruby, yeah. uh, it would be much worse because people in the Ruby world, world tend to do bike shots a lot, like uh, discussions around, should we use this form or this form? Okay. And tools like uh, Rubocop helps a lot, but I think we're quite lucky with using a language like Python where things are more, you have one way, usually yeah. one good way of doing it and you should do it, do it in this one way. Yeah. Uh, so what else, what else? Mm, yeah, we try to keep the pull requests small, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes there is a major refactoring in a core part of the system and you cannot keep this PR small and it's hard to review, but it's important to review it and you have to put your best effort and work in reviewing it. But most of the times you can keep your pull requests up to like 300 editions. Okay. Merge often, deploy often. Like this, okay. is, this, is, this is the way we're trying to, to do it in our team. And I know that you're, you're not doing it like this in, in Unisu. It depends sometimes. So, so we, we are trying to uh, make the, the lifespan of a pull request mm -hmm. as short as possible. So whenever something is ready, it is getting uh, code reviewed as soon as possible. And if it's okay, it's getting more to uh, staging as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. We are just releasing to production once in a week. Mm -hmm. So we are having quick releases in our mm -hmm. weekly sprints. Uh, this works really well for mm -hmm. for uh, our team. Mm -hmm. uh, so 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 there is no things like, hey, can you deploy this to production as soon as possible? Because mm -hmm. I really like this new feature. No, we have deployments on Monday, and we are deploying this thing on on, on Monday. Of right, course, so you're deploying only on Mondays. Yes, we are deploying right. only not, not on Fridays, <laughs> only on Mondays. <laughs> uh, of course, if something is a hot fix and it, there is a bug on production, mm -hmm. then we, 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 we deploy it as soon as it's, it is ready. Mm -hmm. uh, but we are definitely trying to, to, to make the lifespan of a pull request as short as possible. This uh, brings a lot of... Um, this m makes the team feel like we are, we are moving really fast because yeah. a lot of things are getting merged, a lot of things are getting deployed yeah. to staging, they are getting tested as soon as possible, so yeah. they enter the uh, new release. Uh, and if something is, for example, uh, pretty big refactoring mm -hmm. and we, we, we can't really afford to stop everyone working on, yeah. on everything, then we are making a parallel setup uh, yeah. in order to, to, to test this pretty big refactoring there. Mm -hmm. uh, we are iterating on it a couple of times and when we are sure that everything there is okay, we are merging mm -hmm. and that everyone needs to rebase on top of that, but probably uh, the rebase is not going to be really easy because if, yeah. if the refactor is big, there are going to be a lot of changes everywhere. Uh, but we are aiming to uh, do the refactoring step by step. By step. All right. so, so there is not one giant pull request refactoring the whole system. There is, right. okay, I found something that is small enough, it's going to bring value, it's going to take me four hours, just going to sit down and implement it, put it everywhere in the system and uh, move it there. All right. uh, this is bringing us the feeling that we are moving really fast. All right. And I think we, we, we were having this uh, power up in travel where when, uh, was, when, when something is stale for a lot of time, mm -hmm. it just get, gets yellow and yeah, it's it feeling gray, like, yeah, grayed yeah, out. Yeah, grayed yeah. out, yeah. And this is uh, a good sign of, okay, this is uh, for, 
PR4 review mm -hmm. for a lot of time, there is something bad here, so we need to bring this to production or decide to remove this pull request and say, okay, this is not important. Yeah, this we're just not going to keep it here. Just close it. Yeah, yeah just close it and move it to uh, mm -hmm. still or uh, canceled or, or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we are um, keeping the, the pull requests small enough and trying to bring them to staging as soon as possible. Yeah, but it makes sense because uh, you're uh, developing an uh, end-user-facing product. Yeah. And it makes sense to deploy for, to, uh, how to say, uh, batch uh, merges to production, to release to production mm -hmm. on a given day uh, because you're releasing to the end-user. Uh, on our end, we're releasing to a team of uh, back-office people. Okay, yeah. And it's you know we have we have this freedom to re, to we try sometimes we do it every day uh, to deploy to production mm -hmm. because usually when we uh, batch things and deploy like once a week or once every two weeks or even worse once a month things tend to break and and when we're deploying to production and having some features switching around it. Uh, we can catch ours really fast and we can fix them really fast, but it depends on the context. If, if we were facing end users, I think batching releases is the better idea here. Uh, everything good with this? Yep, everything good. It just, it just clashed. Okay. Um, so yeah, and the other thing is, uh, what I was thinking about? Yeah, keeping the pull request small. For, for example, when uh, you say there's a big refactoring, the thing that we try to do with backward factoring is we try to make them in a backwards compatible way okay. so it can be broken down in uh, smaller pull requests. Mm -hmm. you know, this big refactoring is going to be done in 10 steps okay. and we're going to merge and deploy every step along the way mm -hmm. so you have everything like uh, going smoothly. And sometimes, right, for example, right now we have like a really big refactoring going on for the last two weeks no. that's going to be merged at once. And so far things are, uh, are going great because we're very cautious with this pull request, but uh, we couldn't have done it any other way for this particular um, integration because it's quite core for the project. Uh, and from time to time you, you get those big pull requests, but if you keep them small, uh, you're gonna get this speed, and the team, the team, I think, is is really liking it because you you develop something, and by the end of the week, it's already merged and it's already in production, and mm -hmm. people are using it and returning feedback, and you have a really really fast um, cycle of iteration. One thing that we did <laughs> that really helped us speed this is we have something like 2K tests okay. and more unit tests. Okay. And they were running for like ten minutes. Oh, because you have we optimized some of the tests mm -hmm. and we got it to seven minutes. Okay, <laughs> which ten minutes compared to seven minutes, it's it's three minutes increase, but yeah. still, still you're waiting. Uh, and sometimes you just have to write those tests because you need to test your complex business logic. Mm -hmm. You need to hit the database. You cannot mock yeah. the database yeah. and... Uh, so our unit tests are actually hitting the database. Some of them, yeah, yeah some, some of them. And not testing only a small piece of code, but... Yep. When we can isolate the database, we isolate the yeah. database, but you know, this mantra, you should not hit the database is really stupid because <laughs> you're not testing anything properly. Yeah. Uh, and the thing that we did is we used, uh, we were using PyTest and mm -hmm. we used the PyTest uh, plugin for parallelization. Yeah. And it turned out that we have tests that are running now for two minutes. We squashed the migrations. Migrations were taking a lot of time. Yeah. We, we were running with the migrations from the very beginning of the project mm -hmm. and the project changed its type <laughs> yeah. from one thing to another. So we were having like a major overhaul. And when, once we squashed the migrations, uh, things got really better. Now we have 2K tests running in two minutes mm -hmm. and we can optimize this even further because sometimes we have like tests that are not a very good unit kind of unit tests that are testing performance we can most probably move them to somewhere else so this really helps a lot to speed your pull request reviews and to speed the merging process and deploying process all right what else let's see so 
in order to to have good code reviews, you said rebasing. Uh, let's establish this rule. We merge in master yeah. and rebase before merging. Okay. Yeah. This this is what we do. Mm -hmm. And sometimes if you branch of a branch, you add because you're waiting for a code review yeah. and you want to start working on the next thing that depends on the first thing mm -hmm. that you do. For example, when you separate the refactoring from yeah. the new feature. You usually do the refactoring, and while someone is reviewing the refactoring, you start out from branch, this yeah. to, to create a new feature. Uh, this is usually, not usually, but always rebased onto yeah. after the merge, mm -hmm. so it, it feels natural, mm -hmm. like you've just done this pull request. And uh, the thing that really helped us get there is the Git training that we did. Yeah, We oh. did it for the entire company, because if people are not feeling comfortable with Git, and this is the default, and this <laughs> is usually the case, and even if people are telling you I'm okay with Git, they are most probably not. So do a training uh, to understand how Git is working internally, to understand rebasing, to understand mer uh, branching, merging. Rebase on two. Rebase on two yeah. is really, really important thing, yeah. So this helped us a lot and really upped our game. Mm -hmm. you know, For sure. The Git training, the Git training was yeah. good. It's really helpful. Uh, the other thing that I, um, I think is quite popular in some companies is one pull request need to get uh, one plus approval, okay. meaning it needs to be reviewed by at least two people. Mm -hmm. So in our team, we have one pull request needs one approval. Okay. In our team, it depends. It depends on uh, how big is the pull request, what is the domain of the pull mm -hmm. request, who is the knowledge owner of right. uh, this domain. So. It might get only one review, it might get review from everyone. If, if, if this is something new, if this is like proposing a new pattern of doing something, then it yeah. gets reviewed by everyone and get discussed by everyone. Yeah. So it is not uh, something strict that only one plus review. Right. It is not a uh, review by everyone, it is right. just, it depends on the case. Right. We, we are pretty flexible with this. Yeah, I think we're, we are also pretty flexible with this. Um, there is this thing where one pull request should be reviewed by everyone in the team. Yeah, it's quite popular. I personally don't like it uh, for the reason that if your team is two people, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> this is like yeah the straightforward case. If your team is, but um, um, if you have a team of three, yeah. it may work, yeah. especially onboarding someone new mm -hmm. or starting a new project. Four. Again, the same context, okay, starting okay. a new project onboarding, but five and above, I think it's, it's a, a pure waste of time. It don't serve the purpose that the people think it does, mm -hmm. uh, but meaning really distributing knowledge. This, because if you are the seventh people doing the pull request and you see six approvals, you're just going to screw it. Yeah. Even if you're, you're, you're going to screw it, you're a human being, you're going to screw sure. it. You're just going to say, all right, I trust those people, mm -hmm. most probably. And I'm just going to give an approval. Yeah. So I think this sounds wasteful and sometimes it might be a good idea, but as you said, we keep it flexible. Mm -hmm. If you're, if we are introducing a new abstraction, we will most probably do this. Yeah. Hey, everyone, check this. Yeah. But not for every pull request. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just need one person knowing what you're doing. Yeah. And the thing that we try to do once we merge a pull request, we're right now introducing this in the team, we have this thing called definition of done. Okay. So definition of done is your pull request is merged yeah. and you have a wiki page mm -hmm. for your pull request. If you're okay. introducing a new feature, if you're changing something, mm -hmm. you need to have, a, if you have an API, you need to have like uh, a shell test script and okay. some place in the wiki to describe what, what your API is doing. If it's uh, externally facing, uh, we, we have externally facing APIs for people to integrate with us. And this really helps distribute knowledge because next time when someone needs to touch your code base, yeah. you can check the pull request, you can mm -hmm. check the wiki. And we do once every two weeks knowledge sharings yeah. where people that have done new features present them to the rest of the team and we'll start recording those knowledge sharing so mm -hmm. we have a good knowledge base. Okay. And then when you need to have this knowledge, you're gonna have the knowledge base instead of uh, I reviewed, I remember reviewing this three weeks ago because everyone needs to review everything but I don't remember the context. Yeah. So that that's why I think it's, it's quite good. That would be a great idea yeah. of recording everything, yeah. yeah. I, we're slowly realizing that 
the the bigger the project gets, the more we need to put effort into like knowledge, mm-hmm. keeping the knowledge, mm-hmm. rather than having more people review uh, yeah. everything. Yeah. And I think this is it. Anything else to add? A summary? Yeah, let's summarize everything. Yeah, pull requests are important. Code reviews are Pure important. Import, yeah. uh, spending a good amount of uh, code reviewing of a good amount of time doing code reviews is a good idea. Yes. Uh, it is not something that you can just scroll down and click accept. Yeah, conform this, or this should not be acceptable. Yeah. And something really important, if you feel like not in a good mood for doing the code review, mm-hmm. just don't do a code review. Yeah, don't do a code review. Uh, keep it still for, for a couple of hours, keep it still for a day. Yeah. and uh, Give it to someone else. Yeah, give it to someone else. Uh, it is important to, to be reviewed in, in a proper way. Yeah. Uh, take a good amount of attention on the tests. Mm-hmm. They, yeah. are, they are yeah, important, yeah, yeah. they are not something that you can just keep. I'm always starting with the tests because they are Super giving good. me uh, a good overview of what is the expected behavior True. and what common True. cases are there. True. So when I get to the code, I'm not like, why is this doing that? I already mm-hmm. know why because the tests are describing it in a pretty good way. Mm-hmm. What else? Uh, knowledge uh, transfer between people is one of the main benefits for yeah. uh, the, the code base because it's always happened that someone is ill for two weeks or someone is expecting a baby and going to uh, leave the team for, for a month or so and everyone in the team uh, needs to be replaceable. Yeah. So so this... Uh, in a good way, in not, a good not, way. not, not yeah. in a bad way. <laughs> yeah. In a good way, of course. So yeah, this is another a, a pretty huge benefit mm. of everyone knowing the code base and everyone knowing what is happening. Yeah. And yeah, knowledge, knowledge, you should knowledge transfer. You should keep not only transfer knowledge, but store knowledge yeah. for future use mm-hmm. when, when, when you have to. Because people, especially if the project is big, people forget. Yeah. You True. cannot know the entire code base of the project. True. Uh, yeah, code reviews should be done with attention in mind. Sure. They should be done professionally. You should put the effort you're putting in writing code. Mm-hmm. Same effort when you're doing a code review because it's part of the job. It should not be treated like uh, it's a core, uh, I need to do this code review and then I'm back to coding. It should be treated as equal as equally as the code work. Yeah. It's really important. Mm-hmm. And the people writing the code should know that they're going to be reviewed and should do their best to make the life of the reviewer easier. Mm-hmm. You know, you should not do something. If you have the thought, I'm not going to fix this because the reviewer is going to see it yeah. and he's going to say it and I'm going to fix it and this is really, really bad. Yeah. Uh, it should be called and kind of, um, how to say, mentored out, uh, out of people not to think this way, not to behave this way because it, it, it kind of defaults, mm-hmm. uh, especially in general programmers. Uh, and then the reviewer should... Uh, kind of put his best effort in this pull request. Yeah. Try to improve, and if there is like nothing to improve, don't try to. It's like it's not always. If you're reviewing a pull request, you have to leave a comment. If things are good, just say things are good. Yeah. Kudos. Go ahead, merge. Because I, I've seen people like things are good, but I have to write something. So, so let yeah. me uh, <laughs> think of some crap that I can write. Let's uh, have a, an argument about commas in yeah. Python. Yeah. Bad. Still going to end well. Yeah. And yeah, the other thing is we're constantly improving in both teams. Our poor um, code reviewing process. Uh, it's going to be interesting. Interesting if we do the same thing the next year to see how things have changed. Yep. And uh, it's really important. So I hope this has been uh, valuable to some of you. If you have questions, ask them in some comment section in some Facebook or YouTube medium or Twitter. And if the questions are um, adequate, we're going to answer them. Yep. Yep. And that's it. That's it. Yep. Thank you for watching us. This was Hackcast episode 9. And see you again.